pandemic on a global scale. Natural disasters and millions of extinct species of flora and fauna. Explosions from the consequences of anthropogenic activities. Large-scale conflicts on racial, gender, and religious grounds. And this is only a small part of the problems that have befallen our civilization over the past few years. There's an uneasy feeling that it's time to get off this planet. If before, ideas of human colonies in the vastness of space were perceived as a fairy tale, then as an object for research, now they could become a matter of first necessity in the case of saving our species. Elon Musk's promised colonies on Mars are only 30 years away. So to speak, 30 summers to Mars. Therefore, you have enough time to save up for a ticket to the Red Planet if you save only $400 a month. But if I were your intergalactic realtor, I would suggest another good option. What about Titan? Mountains, methane seas, skydiving, a great year-round resort at your disposal. This idea is supported by the sensational news that signs of life have allegedly been found on Titan. The chemical is called acrylonitrile, a complex organic substance that can form cell membranes and azotosomes resembling cells based on lipids from which terrestrial organisms are built. The acrylonitriles have already emerged, so are we any worse? Colonization of this moon has two possible outcomes. Your life on Titan is quite long and happy, or a fleeting death. Why Titan? The habitable area on Titan is quite large. It's the largest moon of Saturn and the second largest moon in the solar system. It's almost half the size of the Earth. And in its magnitude, it looks like the size of Eurasia and Africa combined. On our planet, about 5,834,000,000 people inhabit such a territory. Not a bad size for a space move. Perhaps there's a place for you. Let's say you decided to make a change in your environment, but you immediately had many questions. How long will the journey last? How many seats will there be? How much are the tickets? The closest distance between Titan and Earth is about 746 million miles. That's roughly the same as if you circled the Earth's equator 33,000 times. The duration of the flight would last seven years, quite a long time spent in a confined space. And I think that could be a big problem. Perhaps the coronavirus quarantine was a training that gradually prepared us for the long move. And as you've seen, to sit for even three months in your own apartment is unbearable, bordering on madness. In the process of colonization, you'd find a real emptiness, uncertainty, and a large scope of work. Moreover, you as the first visitor to this new home would have to create everything from scratch. If you, like many people now, have problems with inconsolable job searches, know this, on Titan, you certainly wouldn't have to stand with your hand outstretched at some crater begging for alms. There would be plenty of vacancies here. Power plant technicians, greenhouse agronomists, maintenance personnel, doctors, geocryologists, specialists engaged in research in the frozen zone of the crust who would extract oxygen from frozen water. And this isn't even the whole list. Yes, in exciting science fiction films about space, this isn't shown. But constant deadlines, lack of sleep, and moral burnout wouldn't be left behind on Earth. Here, you'd find the same work routine. Not everyone would be able to safely acclimatize. 
your muscles would ache due to the low gravity, and you would suffer from constant migraines due to the cyanide contained in the moon's air. One of the reasons sparking interest in colonizing this moon is the presence of hydrocarbons on it, on which most of the Earth's equipment currently works, which would make it much easier for us to fly. American scientist Dr. Robert W. Bassard estimated that a crew of 400 people reaching Titan would require 24,000 tons of payload on board. Here he included all the necessary living modules and resources necessary for life support on the conditions of their launch. This includes various equipment, construction materials, and food supplies. Such an adventure would cost the U.S. budget approximately $16,210,000,000, and this is only in a year. Although this is one-thirtieth of the U.S. budget, the amount is quite decent. By comparison, the United States has allocated only $11 billion to fight COVID-19. Titan is the only cosmic body in the solar system for which the existence of a liquid on the surface has been proven. The water here exists in the form of deep frozen ice. Therefore, Titan is actually a double of planet Earth. Well, more precisely, it's in the early cold stages of its development. The average temperature on the surface of Titan that you'd have to endure would be around minus 292 degrees Fahrenheit. For comparison, the lowest temperature on our planet, recorded in Antarctica, is minus 119. You could wait until it evolved to the level of development of the Earth in our era. But since it's unlikely that our civilization will survive up to this time, you have only one option to adapt. The equipment and clothing developed in our time for polar explorers can cope with a temperature of about minus 126 degrees, the spacesuit of an astronaut minus 292. But at the same time, Titan's atmosphere is 50% denser than Earth's, and it has a magnetosphere. This would protect you from radiation, unlike Mars, where we'd have to go in spacesuits because there's a very thin and vulnerable atmosphere. This also means that you, the future inhabitants of Titan, could do without a spacesuit. It would be enough to develop models of the warmest possible clothing, as well as use masks and air cylinders. Experts suggest that the supply of oxygen could be extracted from water ice located under the surface of Titan. If you think 2020 has gotten you used to masks, then with massive and uncomfortable equipment, well, it would be more difficult. Walking around the sites of Titan would be a real Titan's work for you. Rest would require effort. Life would be like survival. Our dreams of space didn't look like this at all. But don't worry, our dreams can come true only on Titan. The gravity on this satellite is 14% of Earth. This means that you'd literally be able to fly. Therefore, to a full set of balloons, masks, and an insulated suit, you'd add wings. Of course, the wings of the Victoria's Secret models wouldn't fit here, but something similar to the equipment for skydiving or a wingsuit would be very useful. Here you are, already packed for a Sunday walk on Titan. But as on Earth, the weather could ruin your plans. Yes, Titan has clouds, rain, rivers, lakes, and seas. But they're made up of liquid hydrocarbons such as methane and ethane. Titan's dense atmosphere, as well as gravity roughly equivalent to Earth's moon, 
means that a raindrop falling from Titan's sky falls more slowly than on Earth. Rainy days on Titan can not only be sad, but also deadly. While Earth's rain falls at a speed of about 20 miles per hour, the rain on Titan falls at a speed of about 3.5 miles per hour, which is about six times slower than Earth's rain. A walk in the rain would resemble the best romantic slow-motion melodramas. But I don't advise going out in this rain without an umbrella. While the maximum diameter of Earth's raindrops is about a quarter inch, raindrops on Titan can reach a diameter of about three and a half inches, about the size of a tennis ball. On vacation on Titan, as well as on Earth, you can go to the sea. The largest seas of this moon are hundreds of feet deep and hundreds of miles wide. For example, the area of the local Kraken Mare hydrocarbon sea is comparable to the Caspian Sea. You wouldn't be able to swim in it, but it would be quite possible to arrange a water date in a boat made of durable material. For lovers of evening walks, Titan would please their souls. As a moon of Saturn, Titan is always facing the same direction. The colony would no doubt be built on the side of Titan facing Saturn. Here, the light reflected from Saturn would likely maintain a low level throughout the day. Therefore, you'd rely on artificial lighting. But you could no longer blame all your failures at work and in your personal life on the lack of time in a day. After all, one Titan day lasts 16 Earth days, and a year is equal to 29 Earth years. Each of the four seasons lasts approximately seven and a half years. Seven and a half years of your favorite summer, and practically 22 years of no season. So far, everything seems to be tolerable and quite entertaining. But another unpleasant issue, poison. It's important for you to know that a poisonous cloud with an unusual composition has been found in the stratosphere of Titan, but you shouldn't be afraid of it. Methane, which predominates on the moon, is non-toxic, but at high concentrations in the air, resembles ammonia. It also has a mild narcotic effect, so I think it would be the perfect planet for Snoop Dogg. The only thing more shocking than exposure to airborne drugs is vinyl cyanide. NASA experts confirmed its presence in the atmosphere of Titan in 2018. Vinyl cyanide is a compound that may be a component of cell membranes in microorganisms, possibly living in the methane oceans of Saturn's moon. Planetologists haven't ruled out the possibility that on the basis of this substance, extremely exotic life forms could be born, capable, for example, of enduring severe colds of minus 328 degrees Fahrenheit, which most of the animals of our planet, even those living in Antarctica, cannot endure. So perhaps in our new home, we'd still be someone's guests and there's no guarantee we'd be welcome. I suspect that since reading science fiction writers and their stories about the colonization of wild space, you've already begun feeling admiration and excitement about this topic. You're already packing your oxygen tanks and 10 pairs of warm knitted socks in your suitcase. But don't hurry. In fact, this process is quite risky and costly. Wars, famine, violence. Humanity wants to leave this all behind and begin everything on a clean cosmic sheet. But most importantly, I ask you not to forget that no matter where people are, in a small earthen state or on another moon, they take themselves with them and their destructive essence simply assumes new territories and new scales.